Okay, so I'm Christ Walker, and welcome to D&D Meme Review. <laughs> Is this something we're doing now? Screw it, let's put on the subreddit style. So I'm going to go through the top memes of the week, every week maybe, depends on how badly this does, and I'm going to give my thoughts on them and see how it goes. So <laughs> let's just go straight into it. I put some more relaxing music on for us, it should be great. My favourite type of RPG puzzle is one that I, as a dungeon master, don't know the answer to and I'm waiting for them to do something entertaining just enough to say, yeah, that'll do it. The DM experience says that hurts. Alright, that's not bad. Um, Reddit only has one scoring algorithm, you either go up or you go down, but I'm also going to throw in an out of ten slidey scale. I like this, this is true. Um, as a DM I've done this before, you just throw, say, five colours, five shapes, and some gibberish line of poetry and just see what they do and the more creative the better and eventually if if you're desperate enough you can use this to fill in the time so i'm going to give this a little up arrow i'm going to give it like seven out of ten something like that we'll start off nice and easy fun fact the D, D devs actually stayed awake for six days straight so they could make the exhaustion system as accurate as possible <laughs> six death Rip Mike Mills. So I think this one's better if you remove this line of text because that's that's just the joke. It's just the joke again. Um, but I do like what the the picture adds to it, just to remind you that it is death. <laughs> I like this a lot at the start, and then the further I got in, the worse it got. And then this last line kind of ruins it. Like never double down on a joke. If you've got a good joke, let it stand. You don't need to explain it twice that would be knock knock who's there little boy little boy who little boy who couldn't reach the doorbell get it because he was short couldn't reach it that's why he knocked knocked at the door couldn't reach the doorbell it's like no just just leave it just leave it at the punch time so i'm gonna i'm gonna give it a tentative up arrow i'm gonna give a six out of ten if you knock this line off it would have been a lot better maybe a nine all right poor wizards Oh jeez, that's a lot of text. Straight off, a bit too much text. Okay, but can you imagine how frustrating being a wizard in D&D would be? Like, you spend so long, maybe even years, studying magic, reading books, working hard to be well-versed in magic and ending up really smart. Then you just meet the other spellcasters and they're just like, Cleric, I believe in God, so I'm magic. Warlock, I just had to ask Cthulhu. <laughs> and they said yes. Sorcerers, I was born with a druid, I'm a... I just chilled in the forest. And I got magic. But I play the fiddle the mouth. <laughs> dude, dude, magic flute. Alright. That was a bit long. I think it was worth it though. I like that. Good work, posh T-Rex. Assuming you didn't just steal that. I give that up arrow and a solid 8. Nothing wrong with that at all. It's just dawning on me that this music is way too relaxing for this. Next time I'll probably go for something different. Music suggestions in the comments. Whatever. At this point, I've given caring about what makes... I've given caring. Okay, given up caring. You couldn't even put any effort into your title. Every player's first character. Oh, I saw Harry Potter. Every player's 40th character. Dude in bear shoes. Tiger shoes. Two Glocks. I mean, I don't even know if they're Glocks. I don't know anything about guns. <laughs> um, I don't know. This, this depends. So my first character was super edgy and thought they were cool. And then my characters now are still relatively edgy, but don't think they're cool. I don't know, people, as they get more comfortable with the rules, do do wackier stuff. So I, I can relate to this, I know players that relate to this, so I'm gonna give it a little up arrow. They're all been good so far. I'll give this 7. Nothing wrong with that. But DM, I'm bored of this character. DM trying to save my character from death. Congratulations, you're being rescued. Me trying to kill the character so I can make another. Just lay in there. DM, please do not resist. So I know I haven't seen the film this is from. Maybe it's the remake of The Iron Giant, something like that. I never watched the first Iron Giant, so I solely know about it from other people talking about it. But uh, I don't know, the premise is there, but I just don't get where it's coming from, the reference wise. So I'm going to give it a down, down, down arrow. Give it a 4 out of 10. This did actually happen in one of my groups. Magic Missile, my level 1 sorcerer. Big bad guy I wasn't supposed to fight yet. Egged. And <laughs> killing word. <laughs> so. <laughs> I, as a player, like to show 
hints or inklings of the bad guy. Not the big bad. I don't like. I hate the term the big bad guy because it just implies that one. There are one dimensional character that's just a bad guy. Two, there's only one bad thing. That's it. You kill that, the world's fixed. But um, I always like to do inklings towards future villains in uh, early arcs. And I don't scale the world to the party. So if you're level one and you're getting into fights with anyone you meet, they might be level one, they might be level ten. You don't know. You should be looking at them, should be doing your research. If you know there's a dragon cave and you start walking towards it, I'm not going to scale the dragon to be level two because your party's level two. It's just going to be a dragon. So I relate to this quite well. Um, People have killed themselves in my games just doing dumb stuff. So I like this. I like this a lot. And it's full of current events as well. The Australian legend guy egging the Kai and then he got punched and choked. It's terrible all around. I give that a nine. Blessed. Different cultures, interpretations of Jesus and Matt Mercer's there. It's an okay meme. It's nothing. I mean, I don't know who that is don't know who that is and I th I don't I think that's Obi-Wan Kenobi maybe I don't know this this one's mostly lost on me so I gave a down arrow and about a four out of ten just don't get it this one's an avatar one I can see that and I know nothing about avatar it's time for you to look inward and start asking yourself the big questions your soul or a 1d10 cantrip so it's me my warlocks I like it everyone Dips Warlock sells their soul or patronage. A little bit of misunderstanding, I guess. I mean, it's a joke, I know that. I'm taking these way too seriously, but... You don't have to sell your soul to be a Warlock patron. You can just... Just make a deal. Just have a trade. Write up a contract. Maybe agree to help one. It's nothing soul-losing, but I like that. I could give it a five and a half out of ten. Nothing wrong with it. So this one's got spoilers. For Captain Marvel... So if you care about Captain Marvel, close your eyes, close your ears, take your headset off, throw it across the room, and then whilst you're collecting that, I'm going to review this really quickly, because I don't care about that film. The last time I trusted someone, I lost an eye. Aren't you the cutest thing? Alright, so I think this is Nick Fury's backstory on how he lost the eye trusting a cat. That's nothing wrong with that. It's not, it's not a D&D &D meme. It's been pulled, pulled to the D&D &D subreddit the title of I hate edgy character backstories, but I don't know. I don't think I don't think that's a D&D &D meme. So I'm gonna download it, I'm gonna give it a zero. It's a good meme. But it's not a DD, there's nothing about that. I don't know. Give this man a group. When you see a meme about playing D D when you don't have a gaming group. <laughs> I can relate to this because I only play online. I've only really ever played online. I played one game in person, it was fine, but I only play online, so every now and then your games start dying out, or you fall out with a group, you leave, you just not have anything, you just see all the D and D stuff online, you're like, Man, wish I had a group. So I gave that eight and a half, give it a little vote. I like the I like the dinosaur's expression. <laughs> like a dead fucking guy. Alright. One shot in the dark. Hashtag D&D &D one shot idea. A dungeon crawl in search for a mad warlock who's been cursed with Etherealis, leaving him teetering between realms. Before each turn, your party members must make a perception check to even find him. It's called Where's Waldo the Warlock. Nice alliteration, nice punchline, nice build up. Bit long, not that great. Still, nothing wrong with it though. You did, you did a good work, Jazz. Black Cat Jasmine, shout out to this person. It's respectable, I get an upvote, I get a 6 out of 10. Can't say no to that. The party gets TPK'd at the end of the campaign. I lost? I lost! Wait a minute, I'm not supposed to lose? Let me see the script. <laughs> so, I like this one a lot because I know a lot of players that think they are the main characters of the entire world, or the most important thing ever to happen. And I think a lot of this mentality comes from the video games that inspired people, some people, to move into my D&D, like Skyrim, where 
you're the dragonborn and you're the first mage leader and you're the first fighters guild champion and the grand champion of the arena and the best of all Cyrodiil and you're the chosen one everything's for you and if you if you lose you just load a save until it does work there's very few games such as uh, Telltale where you make a decision someone dies that's it if the game's saved you can't go back um and I think people forget that, that they aren't just the main characters that they can lose. If you roll really poorly or make really dumb decisions, you can, will, and should get some consequences. I like this a lot. I'm going to give this upvote 10 out of 10. There's nothing wrong with this. And that's saying something because I don't even get the reference to whatever film or show this is from. Sequel. This is Star Wars meme. I don't like Star Wars that much. When a Call of Cthulhu veteran plays the Great Old One Warlock for the first D&D game, you've become the very thing you swore to destroy. Alright, that's not that bad, it's not that reliant on the Star Wars joke, but just throwing Star Wars at me doesn't do anything for me. Um, I've watched some of the films, not that keen on any of them. This doesn't, just doesn't grab me, you know? But this is fine, this is fine. I like the Great Old One shout out, it's an underplayed Warlock class. Get up, vote. Six half out of ten. Who him? That's Jeff Farmington. The DM describing the background NPCs who were never meant to be part of the campaign. The party. Who's that? Who is it? I want a name. So this comes from the Punisher. Um, I love the Punisher. It's amazing. <laughs> it is one of those things where no matter how much you plan as a DM, um, you can't plan for the weird stuff that people are going to focus on or ask to see or try and figure out so <laughs> you can make a great world and you have to have some backup npcs just in your back pocket a couple of names a couple of improvisations an npc generator something like that just ready to go because they will just grab someone at random that doesn't matter and make them matter and you have to roll with that and everyone have a good time give that an upvote give it a nine out of ten it's, it's good i like that inspired by the paladin post i haven't seen that paladin post i haven't seen any of these because i saved them up for the weekly review straight away you're losing points by referring something i haven't seen i use bardic inspiration in bad space there's no sweeter music than the screams of our enemies now go forth and compose me a symphony and then he's happy with that i like this um i don't like players that just go I use action surge, or just, I do this, I attack the creature with my axe. Give us, give us some flavor, are you swinging it over your head, are you swinging it on the hand, are you clubbing him with the butt of the axe, the butt of the axe, the handle, whatever it is, doesn't matter, but it's, just give us something, you know, don't just say, oh, I use healing word, well, straight away, what is the healing word, what's the one word you used? So I like this, I like that person's face. <laughs> I also like the double zoom of like him having his face and then the reminder of how dumb his face looks with a bit of transparency. I give that a straight up 10 out of 10. If I could upvote that more, I would. Say nay to mounted centaurs. You got me with a pun already. I'd like to play a centaur cavalier fighter. Sounds interesting. And as a medium creature, I'd like to ride. That's what I thought you say, you dumb fucking horns. <laughs> Alright, I haven't seen whatever this is reference to. I don't like the made with mimetic thumbnail at the bottom left. Um, but it is interesting. I don't I think Cavalier is the mounted fighter subclass. Not 100% sure. I think it is, though. Um, I like the idea of a centaur on a horse <laughs> or a centaur on a mule. I think the one animal I would 100% support a centaur riding into battle would be an elephant. <laughs> If you've seen that Lord of the Rings uh, scene where the elephants had the little uh, houses on them, just imagining that. I like that. Give that an 8 out of 10. Nice pun. Good meme. Good punchline. Every damn time. My players, a random NPC that I improvised on the spot. Uh, Matt Mercer body pillow. That's a big question mark from me. I'm curious what was supposed to be on these shelves that they deliberately took out of frame. But nothing wrong with that. We've already seen one like that though, so it takes a little bit of the shock factor out. It seems like this one's worse than that one. 
Hang on, I'm probably going to give that a five and a half, six out of ten. Five and a half, go five and a half, go on the lower end. D&D boys, when the fandom went down, they may take our fandom wiki. They'll never take our PDFs. <laughs> so, <laughs> this gets me really bad, because I use the fandom wiki all the time. The fact that you could copy and paste from it was the biggest thing for me. I love just going in, being like, oh, I'm playing a cleric. What are all the cleric subclasses? Clicking on them, finding, reading through, all in one place. And then you could copy and paste. You could copy and paste straight into your Roll20 character sheet. Oh, it felt good. But now that's gone. And now you have to hunt through a bunch of garbage PDFs that don't really have good contents pages, aren't scanned fully straight. Uh, and you can't copy and paste because the text comes out all wrong. It's just... Losing fandom wiki was a nightmare for character creation. <laughs> God forbid you actually have real books and you <laughs> flip it through the page. You can't copy and paste from there. You have to type it all out. Wizards has always had terrible online platform management. Always. Um, just look at Jewels of the Planeswalker for Magic uh, Arena, Magic the Gathering. Jewels of the Planeswalkers, they release a new one every year, and then they're like, ah, oh, we'll just call it Magic Jewels, and that, that'll that be it. We promise you players this will be it. And then they just killed it. They just killed it and replaced it. <laughs> so I like that a lot. It's getting a perfect 10 for me. And I do get the Braveheart reference. And you will know my name is the Lord when I lay my vengeance upon thee. I use Divine Smite. Begone, foul demon, for I shall smite thee. Quoting Ezekiel 25.17. So I guess this is uh, Ezekiel 25.17. That's pretty nice. Uh, I like the matte faces again. Would I like a third different image here? And then maybe the filter? I don't think just copying that wouldn't fall on as much. I like it though, again, just saying an ability name and being like, I, I do this. It's like, cool. Improv, role play, the story. Give us, give us narrative. Give us descriptions. Give us something nice. So yeah, I'll vote. We had seven and a half out of ten. That's all right. We, we saw one almost identical, so I knocked it down a peg. Can't be the only one who's done this right. Me when I laugh at all the become a warlock for 1d10 cantrip memes, but I actually spent three days writing a four-page backstory to Skyrim. My Kenku warlock chose the theme. Haha, <laughs> good meme friend. What are you talking about? <laughs> Alright, I like this artwork a lot. Um, I like that it's two different artworks sort of overlaid together. I like the narrative behind it, that it's just this guy laughing at those memes whilst not identifying with it. I don't write four-page backstories, but I try to put a good amount in, because d and is less about the backstory and more what the backstory made you into now ready for the future story having a 50 page backstory document that's just excessive and bad and kind of like self jerking just don't worry that much about it I think 4 pages a bit on the high end but probably fine uh, it depends on the font size and how self serving it is but I don't know, I think backstory should be more of a summary of events until now, not like a list or anything. But I don't think they should be too long, but they you have to have something. So how do you know what you're playing? I like that if the art was specially made just for this meme, 100 percent a ten, but I don't think it was. I don't know if it was. So I'm giving it a nine. And I think that's a good place to stop it. 20 minutes is about all you people have attention span for, probably, maybe, I doubt it. Um, I'm going to check the average view time, I'm going to call you out next week. But thank you guys for joining me, if you think we should have some better music next time, let me know, give me some suggestions on some royalty free music that's not going to get me copyright struck, not that that matters, because my channel is demonetized anyway. But, um, good stuff good stuff overall lads i'm very proud of you this is quickly becoming one of my favorite subs you can see i'm subbed to it that's a rare occasion i only subbed to, to like 15 things but thank you guys for joining me i hope you enjoyed it i hope you enjoyed this whatever this was i'll see you in the next video